Meet Bailey and his mum and dad, Siobhan and Scott. Three months after finding out their son Bailey was born with a cleft palate, his parents were told he had problems with his hearing too. Um, at first they told us he was like gluia, um, which is common with cleft palate children. So and it will, the hearing will come and go until the, the, like the glue actually clears up. But um, for a little while he was, he was like constantly like having hearing tests and the, the actual line was always flat. So there was never no peak in it, was there? The child is first assessed by the newborn hearing screen at their local centre. Um, that usually would cover any problems with the inner ears um, and also uh, sometimes with the middle ears. But then once the child has passed this, we would also like to monitor them at around three months because the uh, deficit or the blue ear can start to set in after the child has passed their newborn hearing screen and therefore we need to know about this and treat it if needed. Deficit is usually to do with this tube and the muscles of the tube. So the grommets will help temporarily. They are basically um, vents, ventilation um, uh, tubes, uh, short-term ventilation tubes, and they, they can help in the um, short to medium term. Well, we brought Bailey in for his grandma operation, didn't he? He was about five. It was five, it was in September. Yeah. Um, he was very nervous. Um, I think he sort of like knew, because being so young as well, like having all these um, hospital appointments and having, um, it sort of like unnerves him a little bit because they say so many doctors and so uh, he sort of knew and he had a fear of needles anyway. So he was very nervous coming in to the operation. So the day of the operation we came in and I did say to the doctors there that um, he was very scared of the needle and not to show him. <laughs> yeah, but they were really good. The team were really good. The nurses dressed him up as a doctor, I put a stethoscope on him. Um, let me sit at the nurse's station, so he sat there, was answering the phone. So I've done that for a good couple of hours, so of course he loved that and that kept him at ease. And then a little while after he was taken to theatre, wasn't he? He went yeah. to theatre and he was absolutely fine. Do you remember when you had vomits in your ears? Um, yeah, um, I remember um, because I was um, before I had vomits in my ears, and they dressed me up like a doctor, I put like, gloves on and an apron. And then the microscope, no, not microscope, the telescope, uh, um, tele um, telescope, um, <laughs> no, oh, I can't say it. Stethoscope. Yeah, um, around my neck, and um, we bandaged up the doctors who was um, um, looking after me before I was um, going with my, um, going in for my. Uh, because they uh, put me to sleep right now, I was, I was awake, it felt like it went quicker, but it was actually longer. Even though it's a quick, simple operation, but far from going to the theatre, coming back after about two hours. And did you notice a change with his hearing straight away, or was it more gradual? No, I think it was gradual. It because, was gradual. Because like, um, where they put the grommets in, he had like a bit of dry blood in the ears, so it didn't sort of work straight away. Just was saying that when he actually came out, he said, oh, everything feels really loud. Yeah, he said that, yeah. Yeah, and then he said that after day two, after he said everything's gone a bit shallow again. And then another time he said to you, oh, it's gone really loud again. So I think it was just when I was just... Like, getting used to that, yeah. yeah. And after the grommets, they'd done the grommet operation, he seemed to pick up a little bit for more than just... Wow. Like, with the speech and language assessment, we, the first speech and language assessment occurs at 18 months of the, the child's uh, age and after that at three years again with the speech and language assessment so coupled hearing and speech testing and 
then we would uh, have intervals of approximately yearly until school entry. If everything is fine and we're satisfied the child is progressing well from his hearing point of view and from his speech and language, then the assessment will be five yearly until they are um, much older within their adolescent life. Obviously, we'll always remain vigilant and if there's any concerns whatsoever, um, there is immediate access for the child to enter the system to have further assessments. The last four weeks he had a hearing test and obviously his hearing's gone down, deteriorated really bad. Um, he's got low frequency sound hearing loss, obviously which is a concern. And when I write about it, he is being reviewed again in May. Um, our audiologist has explained that it's a possibility because he's started in second school two years and he doesn't want his work to fall behind that he might have to have a hearing aid to obviously help him in the classroom but we're not too sure yet until now so um, hearing aids are extremely useful and in, in that they uh, has have they have less adverse effects or less side effects than the grommets from the point of view that they are non-invasive there is no um, surgical intervention or um, an interference with the tympanic membrane. Um, however, the uh, hearing aids would need uh, extra support from the professionals and also guidance to the parents to ensure that they are complied with because the benefit of the hearing aids is ultimately depending on how long the child uses it in its everyday routine and daily function. But on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, he still has his good days, he has his bad days. Um, normally in the winter, it is a lot worse um, due to the wind, the cold weather. Chest infections. Chest infections, colds, that sort of stuff, uh, which contributes to the hearing. Cold gets in my ears and it feels like it's trying to affect my ears. But as parents, just like the general signs, is like things like the telly, the volume of the telly um, increases as, he, as his hearing drops up for the frequencies. Because some children don't hear an aid that bad, um, they turn the TV up to about 10, 11, and then when um, I have a good day, it goes down to like 9, 8. And if you speak very loud, he can't hear you. So if we speak in a slightly raised voice, you can. <laughs> and things just like having to repeat yourself a few times, um, calling him when he's up the stairs or playing or he's a bit distracted, he has to call him three or four times instead of once. <laughs> You're not ignoring them, are you? <laughs> <laughs> just a busy play. Just a play.